Phantom of the Squad, we already talked about most of it, but we, you know, we're gonna continue. But tonight episode of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, this was the reunion part one. It was a lot of drama, it was a lot of yelling. It's the first ever virtual, virtual reunion. You know, all the ladies looked amazing. All the ladies look good. Thank you so much for your super chat. I appreciate you. All the ladies looked amazing. Now, you know, I like the fact that the reunion started off, you know, we got to see how they started their day, you know, how they were preparing. Everybody had, you know, everybody was in the house, social distancing, doing what they were supposed to do. However, you know, come to find out one of the first questions that Andy asked were, you know, did everyone do their hair and makeup? Was everyone, you know, social distancing? Because, you know, I saw a lot of people walking around in the background and come to find out the only person that did their hair and their makeup was Candy Burris. Now, no shade to Candy, but we could tell. We we, we could tell. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Candy looked amazing. Everybody looked amazing, but you know, everybody's makeup was on point. Uh, Eva claimed she did her hair because she doesn't have much. So she just put some gel in the slick the back. But somebody else came and beat her face. But everybody looked, looked great. Everybody looked great. So um, look, 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 look. It was so, it's so much. It's so much. I just want to know. And I guess I start in the middle because, you know, I got I got I got some receipts we're going to talk about, too. But I just want to know why did they give Wendy Williams an entire segment? Is Wendy paying Andy to talk about her? Because Wendy was only a phone call on the show. Remember, because remember, she went on her platform and like drag Nene about it. But they used that to drag Nene and ask her these questions about her friendship with Nene with Nene. So it's like. Why do we care about, you know, Nene's friendship with Wendy? Why do we care about any of these ladies' friendship with somebody who's not on the show? But, you know, since they wanted to use it, we can talk about it. You know, Andy asked Nene how she felt about Wendy, you know, referring to her as an over there person. And, you know, Nene, you know, she took it on the chin, you know, while everybody was dragging her. She basically said that she and Wendy had an agreement, you know, that if, you know, once they made up, you know, after... Uh, years of you know battling that they would never take the social media. Now Wendy broke that end of the bargain, but Nene didn't. You know, so you can you know you can give her props for that. That being said, Cynthia called out Nene about you know this is the only time <laughs> this is the only time I'm talking about Cynthia because she was pretty much on mute as far as I'm concerned this entire reunion. But Cynthia called out Nene for going to the blogs and talking about you know uh her fake relationships now what i found interesting about that scene was that when uh andy asked her about it cynthia was like well you know she went to the blogs and blah 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 and so eva tried to tip in there and say oh about will jones about will jones and y'all know i broke that news first and cynthia and will that was just like whatever he was just trying to get his five minutes of fame and she was allowing it it wasn't a real relationship we saw it in a body language that season and eva knew it too so it just shocked me that even go pull his name out the woodwork when we haven't talked about him in a minute and cynthia if you notice she kind of scooched over him she didn't say that that relationship wasn't fake, <laughs> but she did say her relationship with Mike Hill is real. So I'm going to give her that, even though it looks a bit awkward as well. But I thought that it was a, a good thing for Cynthia to bring the fact that, you know, oftentimes, you know, everybody scrutinizes them for, you know, fake relationships or manufactured relationships on the show. And we've done it over and over again. We've noticed, and, you know, we could talk about Kenya, but I'm saving her for last. But all of these manufactured, you know, relationships is who is uh, really dating, who's not. It's interesting. He said she was showing, she was showing her claws. She was, she was. Oh my God, Biggie is under my desk, killing me. So what else? Look, oh, it's so much. It's so much. The alliances. Oh yes, dried, dried. <laughs> these names be killing me. Let's talk about these alliances. Now, we talked about throughout the entire season how it was Candy, um, Candy and uh, 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 Kenya, 
and Cynthia versus Nene. And it felt that way. And, you know, Eva got in on the tail end. It seemed like Eva, you know, was like, okay, I, I'm out here alone on the island. I need to be a part of this alliance too. And so she jumped in. So when, when we, you know, look back on the season and we see everything that's going on, it's like, damn. It really, it really is. And speaking of this alliance, why is it that Candy is so upset about Portia jumping ship and becoming back friends with Nene? The whole situation where they were hugging in Greece and Portia was like, it's been really hard without you. Candy decided, you know, that was one of the first questions she want to ask. Like, why? Why was it so really? Why was it really hard living without Nene? Why, why, why? And it's like, girl, what difference does it make? If it is, it is. If it ain't, it ain't. It doesn't matter. So, you know, let me see what else y'all saying in this chat. Because they had an alliance. Exactly, Yoruba. They had an alliance. Now, in, in doing so, when Portia was like, you know, she's not mad at Nene. Like, you know, I cursed her out. I didn't curse her out in front of you. I may not have had that this discussion in front of you, but best believe we have gotten, you know, we have gotten our, our issues on the table. We have worked them out. So why is it an issue? Why should I, you know, should I be mad forever? Should I be like Kenya Moore and, and just ignore the olive branches? It seems like everybody was good with the olive branch. Hell, Cynthia was good with the olive branch. Eva was good with the olive branch. Uh, Candy didn't need an olive branch because she was the only one remember at the end of the reunion last year that Candy was like, you know, Nene was like, you don't matter, Candy. So it's like now Candy was like, well, maybe I do need to be trying to get an olive branch since everybody else got an olive branch. She said Candy was reaching. So it was just a lie. It was just a whole, it was just so much. Oh my God. And then the situation about, you know, Nene calling out, uh, uh, Kenya saying that she didn't believe that that was her egg and, and Andy brought up the fact that he didn't feel like it was right to go at kids. Now, can we talk about that for a second? Because, you know, Brooklyn is a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful little girl. And, 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 you know, it is what it is. And a lot of ladies have problems with their fertility and a lot of ladies do use donor eggs and, you know, donor sperm. Hell, Kenya even ventured into a sperm, a sperm donor. What do you call it? A sperm bank to look for sperm one season. So it's not far fetched. Now, that being said, if kids are off limits, why is it that Kenya, Kenya can throw out a disc? To Nene's kids and say, you know, your kids, we know they're your kids because they look just like you, implying that they're not attractive. Because remember, she also called Nene, you know, said Nene looked like a white chicken drag, but that's a whole nother story. Because while, you know, a lot of people felt like that was read, I was like, oh, that is racist. Like, how you go? First of all, it's racist. And then you saying, you know, you're going up against the drag queens. Like, what? Y'all know the LGBTQ community don't be playing that. So are you now you saying that drag queens are hideous? What is the what is the deal? I don't know. Uh, Jay Farmer talk about Kenya was spot on. I'm just saying that ain't racist. <laughs> That's not racist for her to say she look like a white chick. I'm just, I don't know. You know me, I'm team Nene, so I'm trying to ride it to the wheels fall off. I'm riding it to the wheels fall off. In addition to talking about the kids, let's talk about the kids for a minute. So you got Portia and Eva battling over uh, Pilar and how Eva said that Pilar looked like Dennis with a bow. Even though Pilar does look like Dennis with a bow, she she said it with malice and she admitted she said it with malice. So therein lies the issue. When Andy brought up the fact that Nene has said it before that, you know, Pilar looks just like Dennis, look just like her daddy. And she's so cute. She looks just like her daddy. That is different than trying to read and say, you know, that your baby look like an old man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so totally different. So I'm glad that Andy called her out about that. But Portia, Portia was not having it. Portia read Eva. Oh, she read Eva so bad. I felt bad for Eva. I'm like, damn, Portia, you've been drinking that Hennessy. That Hennessy got you on fire because Portia said she would have beat Eva's ass virtually, honey. I'm glad they weren't in the same room because, man, it was it was, it was, was a lot. You said Eva said it with evil intent. Exactly. And she admitted that. That being said, Eva, oh, 
oh, child, Eva was really just at the reunion to try to save her peach, to save her spot. Because y'all know throughout the whole season, we've been saying, why is Eva there? Why? She keeps having all these babies and she barely shows up. She's never, you know, she's never there. Every season, she's just having a baby. So basically, she's just getting the check for having a baby. And she doesn't film any scenes, whatever the case may be. Now, now, you know, it's being called out. Now, Eva wants to be on 10. Eva wants to come to the reunion and read everybody. Eva wants to interject when it has nothing, absolutely, positively nothing to do with her. Eva, one thing I don't like about Eva is that Eva feels like, you know, she is going to be young and beautiful forever. Eva feels like everybody is old and tired. It's like, girl, if everybody that old and tired, why are you on the show with all these old and tired women making all this old and tired money? I'm just saying, you know, she, she was reading Nene when Nene got up and left. She was like, you know, I'm tired of that old bitch. And I'm like, oh, old bitch. Oh my God. Why she gotta be an old bitch? Why can't she just be a bitch? Um, and my thing is like, I I always tell y'all it's a blessing you know it's a blessing to get older some of y'all won't make it some of us won't make it to get older you know what i'm saying so you know calling somebody old is not a read that being said you know when nini slammed her computer down she came back and said you know she went to change her tampon <laughs> So she may be old, but she not through menopause yet. So, I mean, you know, it was a little TMI, but it was a little read on the side with that. You said she doesn't have any ammunition against them. She don't look too younger. Man, it, man Eva was really, Eva was trying it. Eva was talking about, you know, I'm the youngest one with a house. I'm the youngest one with a house. And Portia was like, we all have houses. Like, what, what is that? I don't understand. Well, you know, Nene's house was foreclosed and Nene had to read her own it because at the end of the day, Nene was like, look, I never bought a house. This is my first house. So whatever house was foreclosed, whatever before that, I got shit to do with that. This is my house. I paid for it. I'm in a million dollar house. Why is mad? Eva, you know, wants to say, you know, I'm in a million dollar house I bought on my own and I'm 38 and I'm sitting there going, well, dang, you taking care of your man now. Now you you spilling tea. You taking care of your man with them Bravo checks like your man who is an attorney couldn't take care of you all these years while y'all bouncing from house to house. But, you know, I'm just watching. I'm just I'm just a viewer just like you guys. I don't know. Um, Another thing that Eva got read about and this ain't the Eva show, but I'm glad they reading her because we've been calling Eva a colorist. We have been calling Eva a colorist for, you know, a few seasons now. Because remember last week, last year, she called Shamia black with a Q. OK, she called Eva bl black. She called Shamia black with a Q. So everybody was like, Eva, well, you know, what, what, all this dark skin stuff that you're talking about. Did you talk to calling girls nappy heads? You know, I don't understand what's going on with that. Now, you know, I don't I don't see it for Kenya, but I will give Kenya props this this one time, one time in my life. I will give, give Kenya props. And that is because. She read Eva. Very, very politely, she read Eva and she told Eva, you know, you being a light skinned woman with with, you know, straight hair, you know, saying that about dark skinned women with a certain texture hair, you know, it comes off as negative. Now, you know, she said it really nicely. She was like, now, I know you may not have meant it that way. But that's the way it is. And you should be more careful when you say things like that. And I'm like, OK, can you? Okay, can you, you know, you bringing that beauty, that, 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 uh, uh, beauty queen, you know, it, into it, you know, because, you know, beauty queens know how to, you know, enunciate and read and, and say things very well. So I love the way she, you know, she told Eva what she was feeling about that. And it seemed like all the ladies agreed. <sighs> now, you said, uh, yes, I like her for checking Eva. Okay. Cause she didn't want our mad black women to beat the mess out of her. <laughs> y'all so funny. While y'all here, I see a lot of y'all here. Shout out to my Facebookers. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe and Facebook. If you like to come over to YouTube, I'm on youtube.com. Michelle Brown. Thank you so much. Now let's get into this, this Kenya situation. Cause I know everybody tagging me. Y'all tag, y'all keep tagging me talking about some. Michelle, what Michelle going to say? What Michelle going to say? Because Kenya brought her marriage license. <sighs> Are y'all really buying Kenya? 
and her marriage license situation. Do y'all really believe Kenya and her marriage license? Can we take a closer look at Kenya and her marriage license? Because, you know, we've been looking at it over on, on uh, Patreon for a few days now. We looked at it. You know, this is it right here. This is what she presented. <sighs> Said she got married in St. Lucia. She is 46 years. She, you know, he was 46 years old at the whatever resort. They got married June 10th, 2017. You see that? It says Mark. I don't know what that is. They tried to block out his middle name or, or either it says Marcus. I don't know. Daily. They blocked out the father's name, the father, the mother, um, the full names of the mother, former wives and all that. They blocked all that out. But, you know, we got tea about the former wife, but, you know, we're we going to go there later. Uh, then you got Kenya's age, 46. She was 46 three, four years ago, <laughs> 18, 19, 20. So, yeah, Kenya about 50 now. Yeah, I, I've been saying Kenya 50. But anyway, it says she was 46 back in 2017, uh, you know, and, and her name. Now, this is her marriage certificate that she presented to Bravo. Okay, she presented that to Bravo. Y'all saw it June 10th, 2017. So she also held it up to the camera. Okay, if you can see, there's another date on the back where it has been certified, I guess, from the St. Lucia people. You know, she said it was Turks and Caicos. I guess she forgot when she got married, but that's on another story. But, on you know, on this particular page, it says August 2nd, 2018. August 2nd, 2018. And if you're zooming in, which I can't do on StreamYard, but, you know, you can do on straight from the A when I post these over there. Uh, it's like, you know, blah, 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 blah on this second day of August 2018. So I'm like, you know, why why are there two dates on the marriage license? Why is there a, a, a 2017 and a 2018? And maybe it takes a while for the, you know, St. Lucia people to certify your documents. <laughs> you know, we from the United States, so I don't I don't know, you know, her marriage is legal in St. Lucia, I, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, her marriage is legal in St. Lucia. I'm still I'm still questioning its validity in the United States. I'm still questioning. I don't know. Like Team Twirl, where are you? Because, you know, y'all happy. Y'all spinning around, twirling, dancing, tagging people on Instagram about this day marriage license that looks like, you know, something that she typed up in her, um, you know, with her, her computer, her HP computer. <laughs> you know, she doesn't have a Mac. She got an HP. So I'm like, what is going on with this? Let's look at it again because I'm I'm really like okay, it's looking. I don't know. Do y'all think it's valid? What do y'all think? Do y'all think Kenya presented valid receipts? Because they didn't actually ask any more questions. It's just like, here's my receipt, here's my receipt, Andy. If you ask me nicely, I'll show it to you. Here it is. And she showed it. And I don't know if we buying it. Are we buying it? Are we still gonna question it? Um, in addition to that, he said, Nope. Kenya's storyline is fake, just like her body. Oh, oh, Kenya got an electronic typewriter. <laughs> and in addition to that, when she was asked about Mark, you know, she's Kenya claims that she and Mark are in counseling. You know, Mark is in New York helping the people. You know, when I look, I don't look. I'm confused. I'm confused. You said I sound dumb. How I sound dumb? What's what's going on? I'm asking you guys. You, look, it's two different dates on it. I see it. You see it. So I'm dumb because I see two different dates. Am I dumb because I see two different dates, Team Twirl? What? What? Doesn't that say August? Can y'all just make your screen big? Doesn't that say August 2nd, 2019, 2018? Now, um, who's dumb? Am I dumb or is Kenya dumb? Because I'm just saying, then... You know, just a few weeks ago when she was on E with Billy Bush, Kenya said she got married in uh, Turks and Caicos. But whatever she gave to Bravo said St. Lucia. And it's what, about a thousand miles between the two islands and not like it's right across the street. So I'm just I'm just questioning its authenticity, as I often do. 
<sighs> now, let me see what else we have. You said Office Depot. <laughs> I, I'm asking the questions. I'm here. We we all watched this reunion. And even though that wasn't a big deal, what else is going on, child? I don't even know. Oh, let's talk about Portia. Now, Portia, like I said before, Portia was reading everybody. Portia had all the text messages. We're going to move on for Kenya because we already know her receipts are fake. But what about Portia's receipts? How about these receipts that Portia had? What about yeah, was Portia receipts fake or not? Nah? Because we're going to talk about it. Because Portia said after Kenya tried to call Portia out for, you know, being a part of their alliance and jumping ship. You know, Kenya was like, well, Portia, well, Nene had texted us and said that, you know, Portia had made it to Celebrity Apprentice and what we going to do about that. And Portia was like, girl, you talk about some three, four years old. Let's let's bring some receipts that are current. Let's bring some receipts that are about now. Because, you know, even Cynthia said we all talk about each other. That's no big deal. But let, Portia was like, I'm going, I, you know, I'm not leaking no text, which has become a thing now that, you know, she was like, I'm not leaking no text. But, you know, I will send it to Andy and Cynthia. But I have receipts that Kenya said that she wanted to take down Cynthia. And when Andy asked about those receipts, was like, how old are these receipts? Portia said they're from this season. And I'm like, oh, the shade. That is a read because y'all know I have predicted that Kenya was going to backstab Cynthia because Cynthia was riding so hard to get Kenya back on this show. And now that Kenya is back on this show, she does not need Cynthia no more. So it's like, bye bye, Cynthia. Watch my mark my words, and I bet you I will put a hundred dollars on it. I cash out one person a hundred dollars. I will put a hundred dollars on it. That uh Cynthia, if Cynthia gets fired, Kenya will not be politicking to get her back. I bet you that. I bet you that, but you know, it is what it is. You said Portia was on fire. Uh candy is next, honey. What else? Portia was snatching. <laughs> so, you know, you said Portia won. So, yeah, Portia won. Then we had Eva going in on Portia. Look, Portia, Eva was trying, trying too hard. Eva was trying too hard. And Portia, again, you know, hopped, you know, hopped in because she was like, look, you know, you tripping. And Eva called Portia an aged hen, an aged hen. How you gonna call somebody at age 10? You probably like two years younger. I don't know if you're two years younger, two years older. I don't know what age they got difference they are. But at the end of the day, Eva feels like everybody is older than her, that she is she got youth on lock. <laughs> and so Portia started going in. She said, them <laughs> she said, she said, yo, you look like a what did she call her? She said, You look like a thumb with lipstick or something like that. Then she said something about her breasts look like age 10. And, you know, I don't want to call them titty balls, but she said that they were social distancing. <laughs> Portia read Eva. Eva, I don't know, Eva, Eva should have just closed her laptop and went home. Because Eva, child, they got Eva good. They got Eva good. You said, I, you swear, Eva thinks she a baby. Is that what it is? A thumb with black <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. John, I appreciate it. Uh, Portia probably already is on thin ice since Phaedra Gate. I doubt she make that mistake of lying again. Yeah, Portia ain't gonna lie. Portia got receipts. She sent those receipts over there. Portia was on a hundred. Yeah, I did. I forgot to mention uh, about uh, you know Nene shutting her laptop. Everybody kept talking about Nene was gonna get red. She was gonna get red. They all read her. But what I did see was everybody did, you know, try to come for her, but she was reading everybody back. And look, I didn't even I didn't even have to mention Salt Bay, aka Candy. What did Candy talk about this episode besides you know questioning Nene's friendship with Wendy, questioning Nene's friendship with uh with Portia? Like, come on now, Candy, you could do better than that. You could do better than <laughs> you said. Exactly. You can do better than that. Um, let me see. Oh, and Kenya being insulted 
by you know uh who called her bitch the nini called her bitch i think it was nini who called her bitch and kenya was insulted meanwhile you didn't use the whole c-u-n-t word against tanya you 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 know I, anyway kenya is just a whole big ball of hip hypocrisy at this point <laughs>